It's a bunch of levers. But whatever it is they're supposed to do isn't working. It's a note pinned to the control panel. Uh, let me save you crow's feet and read that for you. It says, Baron Shroudy, I fixed the control panel for the theater flats. I had to, uh, find something about uh, cross-wired to some power source. Uh, we'll fix it next time, I think. Signed RM. Man, this guy must be a doctor. I can barely read this note. I would like to talk to that, but it lacks brains, lungs, and interesting thoughts to share. A lady does not snuggle with a decapitated head no matter how soft, cute, and furry he is. Though he is awfully cute, aren't you Wiggle Snuggums? It appears to be the decapitated head of... a stuffed animal? They killed Smuggle Bunny! You bastards! It's a mythical horse whose horns are said to grant three wishes to whomever touches them. Uh, actually, that's a male deer. And they don't grant wishes. That's a, a ninth level spell. You're thinking of a unicorn whose horn is said to neutralize poison along with many other powers that depend on who's running the game. Even if Draxylvanian unicorns could grant wishes, the material components of such a spell... Wait! Stop! I have something very important to say. Mona is bored. Meat. True, but you do need the marinade. It's the head of a most unfortunate little piggy. It's actually a boar, like its former owner. And really, how many pigs have not met an unfortunate end? It's not like pig milk is in high demand. I refuse to chat with swine. Any animal that can't differentiate between feces and mud is not on our buddy list. Never touch anything in this castle that could come to life. Especially a zombie beaver. He'll chew your head off, man. It's a particularly large squirrel with fangs. Um, that's a beaver, bug brain. Lame. Giant vampire squirrels would have been way cooler. I have no need for it. What if we get attacked by a giant Goldilocks? You might want to keep it in mind. It's the decapitated head of a bear. How barbaric! Uh, but the taxidermy is very sophisticated. Uh, note the flawless preservation of his dying roar. It's a rather nasty-looking gargoyle. Is it me, or is he actually wearing a wig? It looks like you could use a shave. That's a pretty serious goatee he's sporting. Hello up there! Huh. Why won't he talk to us? Because we're beneath him. So he looks down on us? He's stuck up. He's up on his high horse. Okay, okay. Don't run the joke into the ground. It's my bed. Really? Because I thought your bed was down in the basement. You know, that pine box with dirt in the bottom that smells a bit like a corpse? Well, I like sleeping down there better because this room gets way, way too bright. I'm afraid you haven't been getting much use. Yeah, the bed-making industry in Draxylvania is in big trouble. It's a vase full of dead roses. Shroudy used to bring me flowers every week, but they were always pretty much the same. Roses? Dead. It's the dark, frigid waters of Lake Varg. Do people swim in it? Well, sometimes they float, usually face down. I don't know what it is about this mirror, but... I simply don't look like myself. You're pulling my wing, right? What do you mean? Sweetheart, 
It looks like Shrouty taped the picture over your mirror, probably because he didn't want you to see or actually not see your reflection. Apparently, he had some six-year-old kid draw the picture. Wait a minute. What does it say down in the corner? With love from Shrouty. Scratch the six-year-old kid idea. I guess I'll have to add art to my list of things that Shrouty sucks at. Maybe I'll put it just below escaping vampire hunters. <laughs> it's my bed. You mean it's your coffin, right? Oh, Frederick, you and your vampire obsession. It's my bed, nothing more. You say tomato, I say tomato, you say bed, I say it's a velvet-lined pine box that corpses sleep in. I call that a coffin. I still say it's my bed. And come to think of it, I really need to wash my sheets. For some reason, each morning when I wake up, I am laying on a pile of dirt. I'm no expert, but I think the dirt is something you vampire types need for some reason. Something about a grave. I swear I read that somewhere. I'm no vampire, so I won't be needing this dirt. That's strange. I never realized the castle had a sub-basement. It looks a little hot in there. Who's that mean-looking dude with the pitchfork? And who is that standing next to him? You mean the guy with the stupid look on his face and the name tags that says, My name is George? I have no idea. Hello in there! Who are you waving to, Mona? A whole bunch of lawyers. Oh my! Frederick! It looks like... like a pile of rotting bodies! How revolting! It's a good thing I haven't eaten anything this morning. Otherwise, I might be making a contribution to whatever's down in that pit. You mean, you're on the verge of blowing chunks? Yodeling in the gully, talking to Ralph on the big white telephone, executing a Technicolor yawn, launching lunch, delivering street pizza, or involuntarily creating a personal protein spill? Fudgek, you're more than a little twisted, but highly creative. who this Jenny girl is. Given the fact that it's 1897, I'm more surprised that you're not wondering how you call somebody. It says for a good time call. Jenny, 8675309. Boy, I would have hated to be the poor bastard who had that phone number. I bet millions of people were tortured by that number, staring at it while hanging there, wondering who was this Jenny. It's not my job to keep the walls of Shroudy's torture chamber clean. In fact, if I had some paint, I might add a few choice words myself. I'd say it's a good thing you don't have any paint, considering this is supposed to be a family-friendly game. It looks like a poker and a brazier full of hot coals. Obviously, this is another one of Shroudy's torture devices. Judging from the smell in the air... I'd say it's gotten some use lately. Is that what that is? Oh man! I thought maybe somebody was cooking hamburgers down here. My mouth started watering as soon as we came down the steps. So much for calm, cool, and collected. I'd say he lost his head. <laughs> Rufus, do I need to clip <laughs> my nose hair? Lonely now that you have no body? <clears throat> If I get anywhere near him, I think he'll bite my hand off. I would like to talk to that, but it lacks brains, lungs, and interesting thoughts to share. <clears throat> no, I better 
not. I rather like my hand in its current unburnt form. How do you like living in Castle Varg? It's all right. I can do what I want, hang out with my buds, party, drink. No one bothers me. But I feel out of touch sometimes way out here. When I was in the city, I was in the know. I could follow my favorite sports team, hear the latest gossip. Sometimes it's just too isolated around here. You know what I mean? I do. You just need to feel more connected to the world, more informed. I do too. As soon as I'm back in Pelly, things will be back to normal. Great. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Edgar, can I borrow some of your clothes for Frederick? He needs to cover up a bit, don't you think? Bath would help more than new clothes. Why not just drop them in the tub and I'll scrub them down? That is an excellent idea. I like your thinking. Don't I get a say in this? Wait, I do. And it's no. Soapy water makes my stomach upset. So does food. Stick to your wine. The clothesline has Edgar's clothes on it, held up by clothespins. Oh, shouty! Yes, my love? I have something to tell you. I shall hang on your every word, my delicate dark blossom. I just wanted to say... I hate you for what you have done to me. I think you are a horrible, horrible, uh, thing. You need to die right now and get out of my way. And when I say die, I mean rot in heck forever. Forever, do you hear me? Rot in heck and darn you for all eternity. Mona, don't sugarcoat it. Tell them how you really feel. It's a beautiful pink magical glowing light. I don't get it. Be ye evil old witch or undead bombshell, women just love the pink. I don't want to smell like a French, um, house of women of no more fiber. <laughs>